Hi, this is Sean with Crew Dog Electronics, and this is going to be your Stratix Quick Start video. I'm going to show you what's inside the package and how to get up and running. So here's what's inside. You've got the Stratix unit already attached to the mount. We've got the battery already packaged. The two antennas, notice they are labeled 978 and 1090, which is going to correspond here to the labeling on your unit. We've got the strap for attaching the battery to the mount. Uh, I've got an extra set of tools. The screwdriver here will fit the uh, screws here on the bottom of the unit, and these wrenches will uh, work to tighten these gold ports right here in case you ever needed it. It's not something necessary, but some people do like to upgrade their units uh, as time goes on, so I give, those, give you those tools in case you need it. And lastly, this is an SD card adapter. You don't necessarily need it to run the unit, but if you ever were to want to reflash or run a different version of the software, this gives you the ability to do that by taking out the little micro SD card in there carefully with some tweezers, putting it in here, and then inserting it into your computer. So first step, uh, what you want to do is just notice the labeling on here. So this side needs a sky view. The GPS is actually here underneath the logo. So this side always needs to have a sky view in order to get a GPS lock. So once we get up and running, uh, you'll want to put this outside for maybe 10 or 20 minutes with an unobstructed sky view, not inside in your house, but outside maybe on a porch or something like that. And that way it'll build a catalog of GPS satellites and you'll get a fix much quicker when you use it in the aircraft. So first step is you want to take out your antennas here from the bag. And like I said before, they're both labeled, they're tuned for 978, which is the ADSB ground frequency. And take note that you're not going to get reception of ground towers because they work by line of sight. So you have to actually be up in the air for that to work. So you can see the 978 label here, 978 here. And you just want to hand tighten this on the gold port. You don't want to crank it down because you can end up uh, cranking the wires inside and, and bending them. And just, just lightly hand tighten it. It doesn't have to be that tight. Same thing for 1090, this is what's giving you your air-to-air -air traffic um, and getting reception from the other aircraft that are ADS-B out equipped. And you will get uh, reception from this on the ground. So you can see they're both in here. They're lined up 978 with the 978, 1090 with the 1090. Next step is to unpack the battery. And uh, these batteries come sealed from the manufacturer, Easy ACC. The reason I picked these is after a lot of flight testing, these are the ones that put off the least amount of electronic noise, so there's no interference with your radios, and uh, it also has an included power adapter, which is very convenient. One of the downsides is, is the only way to power off the unit is you actually have to unplug the power cord, which isn't ideal, but all in all, this is the most compact and best performing battery. So inside the battery kit, You'll see here's the battery with the included um, power plug. This is where you plug it in to actually charge the unit. You can see input it comes with a little charger here. And you can just use a, a 2 amp charger like you would for an iPad. Um, so the way you power on the unit is you want to line this port up here with the USB port here. And a lot of people ask, what are these two ports on the side? This is HDMI and this is an audio port. These aren't used for what we're doing here. The Stratix project is based on the Raspberry Pi, which is a computer board inside that can be used for a bunch of different uses. People make Nintendo systems out of them. Um, but the whole point of the project was to use some off-the-shelf components to get an ADSB unit. So to power on the unit, you just plug the battery into the port right here. You'll see the fan is going to whir uh, just momentarily as it boots up. And that's to show you it's working but there's a fan controller inside that'll only activate the fan when the temperature gets up, gets high enough that it needs it. So you can see the red light means it has power. And momentarily here, you're gonna get the green light, which means uh, the unit's actually powering on. There's the fan turning on. Here's the green light. That means the software is actually kicked on. And now the unit's actually powering on. So I can show you how the mount works while we're waiting for the unit to get booted up here. Just going to take your four suction cups out of the bag and you're going to put them here on the outside of these little holders. So they pop in here. And please note the uh, suction cup mount is only getting shipped with the later units here in November. 
So if you have one of the earlier units, um, you won't have this. But if you go to my website, there's a link on where to buy this on Amazon for about 10 bucks. So you can see these are the suction mounts. This is going to face the outside of the aircraft. And here's the cutout for where the fan goes. So uh, if you were to use the mount, you would take the unit. This Remember, this is the side that faces out. Slide it into here, down through the brackets. And you can see the fan is still in the cutout, and this side is still going to face to the outside of the plane. Now to put the battery on, what you'll do is line up the battery with the port. You can plug in the battery, and then you can use the attached Velcro strap to bring this all together. So you put this here in the middle where the mount is. Go through the loop. And now you can see this is one secure unit. The little rubber feet here give you the spacing that you need. This strap keeps it all together. And you can just put this on the, on the window, uh, in the back, or up in the front, wherever you need it. Um, that way you'll get good GPS reception, and this is kind of out of the way. For orientation, you want the tips of these antennas facing up towards the sky, so the unit's going to be pointed up vertically like that. If you're looking at it from the inside, this is what it looked like. The fans on the bottom, the antennas are sticking up. So we can see the units booting up here. We've got the red lights, which means you have power is on, and a solid green light, which means the software is booted up. If you ever get a blinking green light, that means you're having a problem with the software. You need to reflash it. So visit the website. I've got instructions on how to do that. Or if you ever get a blinking red light, that means the something wrong with the power source. So some people use a plug right into the plane with a, a little cigarette lighter adapter. You have to make sure at least you're getting a two amp output for that to work. Or sometimes when your battery is uh, getting low on power after about three or four hours of flight, you'll get a blinking red light and that means that the power is uh, about to turn off. So now that the unit is booted up with a solid red and solid green light, all you need to do is connect to the Stratix network on your uh, favorite EFB program, and, and you'll want to select the Stratix network. So you can see there it's selected, it'll connect, and uh, you have to be on this Stratix network in order for uh, you to get any information for your EFB program. A lot of people use ForeFlight, FlyQ, iFly. The great thing about this Stratix is it works with multiple programs. So to check the status of what's actually going on with the unit, what you'll do is you'll bring up a web browser like Chrome or Safari, and you'll type in 192.168.10.1 and then hit go. And what this is going to do is bring up a settings screen. So you can see you have the software version up here, status, green light connected, two radio devices connected, and these are your radio messages that are coming in. Uh, 1090 is the air traffic. It'll show you how many towers you're picking up. Also that the GPS hardware is connected. I'm inside right now, so I'm not going to get a fix. But down here it'll show you how many satellites you have, how many are seen or how many tracked. And like I said earlier, it's best to connect your unit outside, leave it there for 10 or 20 minutes just for the first time when you're using it, and it'll build a catalog of satellites and it'll connect much quicker in the future. So you can go down through the different tabs here on the left-hand side. Weather will show you some more information about the towers that you're connected to. Traffic can show you the call signs, altitude, some more raw information about the traffic your Stratix is picking up. And you can adjust these settings up here if you want to look at the tail number or the call sign, the squawk, or the distance. The GPS AHARS tab is a useful one. You can use this to recage your AHARS once you have it in the proper orientation. So you can see right now it's not perfectly aligned, so hit the reset level, and now it's aligned. And now you can see when I move the Stratix unit, the AHARS will move with it. If you go to the bottom, it'll give you some more information about which satellites you're picking up, the strength of them, and uh, where your GPS position is. Here's towers. This will give you some more tower information. Once again, the towers are only going to work when you're in flight because you need that line of sight with those ground towers. Down in the settings, I wouldn't mess with any of these settings. Uh, please don't turn on the logging settings because that will uh, fill up your memory card and that can cause the unit to not work. You can also use uh, these settings down here to calibrate your gyros or reset the AHAR sensor orientation once you get it set where you want in flight. And that's it. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me or post on the website.